into week four of Back in My Comedy. Thank each and every one of y'all for coming, man. This is wonderful. Y'all can't even clap for yourselves. I know y'all ain't gonna clap for me. It's all right, though. It is all right. We're gonna have to have a good time here tonight. Is everybody having a good week so far? Yeah. My man is back, IT professional. He's back in the building. Thank you very much for coming. Um, we got my lady, she's back this week. Came back with her. Sir, you're a good man. We know she likes big knives from the time that you work here. Um, I don't know how it's gonna go at home with y'all, but maybe y'all into that type of stuff. It's okay. How y'all doing? Y'all all right? Y'all having a good week so far? What do you What do you do for a living? I own a business. Own a business. What do you do for a living? I tutor. You tutor? Oh, you got a good ass trust fund. Kids ain't trying to learn shit no more. <laughs> tutoring business is at an all time low. We got that. Why do kids need a tutor when they got the internet? And that's some bullshit. Yeah, you don't need a thirty day resignation, huh? That's How y'all doing? Y'all all right? Good, good. I'm glad y'all came. I'm glad. Hey, my friend Sierra is in the building. Hey, she came by herself. She's sitting by herself. She's probably gonna stay by herself, but it's okay though. Thank you for coming. I appreciate y'all. How we doing at this table right here? We're gonna go to every table today. Okay. Y'all celebrating some tonight? Y'all all right? Y'all just out tonight. That's what I'm talking about, man. Sir, I like your beard, sir. That's very nice. I can't get mine to connect. I'm still working on that. I heard a little myth that you had to go down on women to do that. I've been doing that since I was 17. I've got 25 years experience. My shit still didn't grow in like that. It worked out a lot better for you. Thank you for your contribution to society, sir. I appreciate that. Yes, people in the back right there, how y'all doing? Y'all okay across there? Okay, now I want to let y'all know, these seats up front can be taken by black people. We're not having no segregation. There's not no rolls of parts, get on the back of the bus type shit. We liberated now, y'all can sit up here. They don't bite, they got good credit scores, they teach you about good jobs and shit. If you got somebody to tutor your bad ass kids right here, this guy's an IT specialist, he walks to the bathroom, but he'll be back, he's drinking coke. If y'all just wanna get on this good side, okay? All right, now we're gonna all be family here tonight, that's all right? Yeah, see, I like y'all, y'all hype table, boy. Y'all, that's, that's Woodstock over there. Bro. Doing it big, y'all. Yeah. Anybody making love tonight? Uh oh, somebody said nope over there. That's a bad night for you. Anybody making love tonight? Oh, okay, that's what I'm talking about. That's my kind of crowd. Man. My crowd, uh, that's my crowd. My crowd had a hunch on something. Y'all are my kind of crowd. How many remember when you was coming up and you had like levels to having sex and you couldn't just go all the way the first time like the kids do now? The kids be in fourth grade, they all out fucking having sex, not us. We had levels. First, we had to not be so shy. We had to get her her phone number. We had to call her. Then we had to meet up with her somewhere. We had to kiss. Before we had sex, we had to do something called hunch. How many of y'all remember the hunching days? I'm talking about, boy, I was a hunch professional. I had hunched on about 17 girls that hadn't had sex yet. I'm talking about, it was a hole in the front of all my pants. All my pants were tore out in the front. I was hunching. I'm talking about, I started a fire one time in the bedroom. I was hunching so hard. I was a hunch professional. I was kind of disappointed when I first had sex. I had more fun when I was fucking hunching. Hunching was the shit because you get it concentrated in one place. All your little young ass energy be in that one spot, you just keep moving up and down, jigging, oh, that was my shit. And the best kind of hunter too, he had on jeans too. <laughs> jeans hunting was that shit. Now, loose basketball shorts hunting, see that was too much close to the real thing, you know, you know what I'm saying? But that jean hunting, when you hit across that zipper, that hard ass material, so y'all know when you get erect, your dick be hard like a green pine cone. You ever seen a green pine cone, sir? Are you ever a green pine cone against them cheeks? That was some great shit. That was an intense time in our life, man. Let everything go right there in front of the jeans. It was wonderful. All uh, these chalk stains in my jeans. I'll tell you, I was a hunch professional. I was disappointed when I started having sex. But then they want you to buy them shit and do stuff for them. I want to go back to the hunching days. But thank each and every one of y'all for coming in here tonight, man. Welcome to this. Is my, that's my comic, this is our fourth week of the 10 week competition. A lot of y'all been riding with us. I can remember some of the faces I see. Y'all been here every week. Thank y'all very much. Black people, y'all gonna sit up here next week. <laughs> we gonna have a city. I want everybody to come in here early. I want you to walk all the way from Peach Orchard Road to Washington Road. And we gonna have a city like no other right here at Shetlands. I want you to sit your black asses right across the front. I don't want you to move for now, nobody, okay? Is that all right? Because I have a dream that one day, there'll be some niggas sitting right up here. But it's not different, though. 
we're going to keep this thing moving, man. We got to meet our judges. We have judges. Now, everybody, at the end of the competition, you're going to get papers, and your vote matters. You're going to pick your top three comedians of the evening, okay? Top three comedians is going to be tabulated after the show. We have a uh, page on Facebook called That's My Comedy. I want you all to join that page. Scores are going to be tabulated. They're going to put them up, and um, you're going to see where everybody stands right now. We had a faux pas last week in the standings because one of the judges didn't turn in their sheets. We don't know what judge it was, and we're not here to really judge nobody. We're not here to be critical of anybody. But please, make sure y'all turn in your goddamn sheets tonight, okay? Now, with that being said, we're gonna go to the judge. First, this lady is a dynamic poet, a single mother, a homeowner, and she has been living in the struggle. I don't think she's struggling that hard, though, but she works in corporate America. So y'all give it up for my girl, the one and only Miss Saju. Yes, yes. Our next judge is a man who needs no introduction this side of Washington Road. He's been in here several nights drinking liquor and looking up women's skirts. Please give it up for the one and only Paw Paw. I love when Paw Paw talk to you. Paw Paw, get around the microphone and tell you what he think about you. Oh, the man who reason we're all here. The man who started this thing. Who had the bright idea, the visionary. I gotta butter it up because he's the owner too. Y'all give it up for the one and only Mr. Mike Snowberger. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I also want to let you guys know the Chevy's is not just open on Tuesday nights. They open on Monday night. Monday night is poker night. You come right here and play poker at Chevy's right here, okay? What time poker start? Seven, poker starts at seven, prime time. You know, you come play a couple hours of poker, get back home, make it a work on morning, it's great. It's not like black church in there, you know, they don't keep it too long. <laughs> so, come play poker here Monday night. Tuesday night, we'll be right here doing this, especially for the next six weeks, all right? That's my comic, exciting comedy competition, where the winner of this competition will get a cash prize and an opportunity to open up for a major headliner, okay? We're gonna be making that announcement on who that headliner is within the next couple of weeks. But this is going down right now. Next, on Wednesday night, is karaoke. Everybody got that shower voice you think you can sing, you want to be your favorite singer? This is your chance. You can come right here to share. Who's your favorite singer, man? Ed Sheeran. Huh? Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Oh, the, yeah, shape of, I'm shape of you. I know about Ed Sheeran. I, I fuck with Ed Sheeran. I don't, but it's 2019. I like him. I don't fuck with him. Let's just make that clear. <laughs> I like Ed Sheeran's music. He's dope. That's right. You can come here and sing Ed Sheeran right here in front of the world, right here at Thursday night is ladies' night. Ladies are free until 11 p.m. Yeah, huh? we got that right. So y'all come on in here, have a good time with DJ Tim and DJ Black. Still, okay, yeah, DJ Black's still here, but he's on a tentative contract. He might get fired. Yeah, we don't, yeah times are hard. Times are hard. I want to be cutting back and forth. But no, nah, DJ Tim and DJ Black are doing their thing. The Hip Hop Dalmatians. Salt and pepper, they in the building. They're gonna be doing it big right here. Ladies, y'all in the building free till 11 o'clock. They will have good men with jobs in here, so there's a lot of opportunities for y'all to come up. Um, Friday nights, Friday nights and Saturday nights. There's a band every Friday and Saturday night right here at Shack. This week, Friday night will be Mr. Haney, a terrific rock band. So y'all come in here and rock out with Mr. Haney. Saturday night, we got a terrific Country band, we got the Joe Old band in the building. So y'all come listen to some of that good country music. You know what I'm saying? You like country music? No, I do too. You don't believe it? You don't think, you don't think I like country music? I rock, with, I rock with country music for real, man. Way down yonder in the Chattahoochee, never knew him but the muddy water meant to me. See, you ain't gonna know that, did you? I'm digging up bones, I'm digging up bones. And I see shot. I'm like, God, he's in the country. I was gonna do a long song, but I forgot what I was gonna do. I, I got to go next time. I'll be at karaoke singing country songs. I'll be singing country songs for all the white women trying to get my credit score up. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all ready for y'all first comment? Somebody say yeah. yeah. That's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. We got it going on. I, at this time, I don't know what's wrong with this dude. He does not get the luck of the draw. Every week we've had this competition, he's went first or second. Next week, I'm gonna pull the card for him. Please start by giving a warm, that's my comic welcome, that's my comic welcome to 
the one and only Mr. Rum D. You know, just racial humor. And I was thinking lately, like, what do white people really have on everyone else? I mean, besides all of human history. <laughs> but like, in general, what are we really good at? And, I, and it clicked. I'm like, we are amazing at racism. We have perfected that shit and honed those skills over a millennia. We will hurt you in ways you didn't know you could be hurt before with just words. We have made a word so powerful that I dare not utter it anymore. Exactly. <laughs> but no, I was thinking about it, and then I was like, what's probably the most hurtful shit that, I, that comes to my memory? So let me take you during, to a little history lesson throughout history. Mid-1800s, the race to pick on at the time, was uh, Asians during the railroad tracks and all that. And someone, some redneck hick, decided to come up with a word that hurts them <laughs> In a way I never thought they could be heard. Zipperhead. Who said what? Oh, don't worry, I'll teach you. <laughs> We're gonna have a history lesson. Zipperhead is a term that was made for Asian people working on the railroad tracks because sometimes they would lay their head down on the tracks and the train would just come by and take it clean off. That means one fateful morning, some fucking wackadoo woke up was putting on his jacket and just went, <laughs> hey, you know what, Ma? <laughs> this kind of sounds like that Chinaman's head the other day. Right there on the railroad track. <laughs> you should have seen it. Railroad track came by and looked like a damn top with his ponytail flying. <laughs> now what say you, me, and my sister go up to the mountains and let's fuck? <laughs> don't bring Dad. We don't do that gay shit here. It's going great tonight, by the way. It's just going lovely. But I had the epiphany the other day. I was looking back on my life, and I think my family might be racist. I was in high school, and I was about to be uh, dating this black chick. And I go up to my mom, and I was like, hey, I think I might be going out with this girl. She's like, what's her name? And I go, Shaniqua. And she was like, uh, don't you think there's going to be a little bit of a cultural difference between the two of you? I was like, no, she watches Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I met her in an anime club. Because that's how much of a loser I am. But no, I did, and I and it clicked in my head like a lot of a lot of the people in anime club are black and watch Dragon Ball Z. And I, I was thinking about the appeal, and then I described the show in my head, and it made perfect sense. Basically, the show is about a space monkey that comes down and fights other space monkeys, and by the end of the first season, they beat a white emperor. And it made perfect sense. Don't worry, you can laugh, this is a joke. I would never date a black woman. I do know what black dick tastes like, though. Alt knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'll meet you in the parking lot in five. Ladies and gentlemen, that's about all I have for you this week. My name's Ben Rumpke. <laughs> Y'all give it a one time for Rump D, man. Don't be like that. I was talking so much I forgot to tell you that the topic that the comments gonna be talking about this week is racial stereotypes. You know, they're gonna be giving their take on different racial stereotypes. Everybody's got five minutes. I probably should have told them that first. I'm sorry, Rump. But you made them feel feel painfully uncomfortable. And, um, oh, I know there's gonna be some holes in his seat from when their assholes play so much. Um, no, there's gonna be some black dudes waiting to beat you up outside too. So. I'm going outside. That's all right. That's all right. First up, so I do. What do you think of Rum Dean? Hi. He just had to call me first. Um. <laughs> 
love your work. <laughs> Thank you. Have you really heard it? Huh? Have you actually heard my work? Yeah, no, Marcus introduced me. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we're friends now. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. It didn't do it for me. I'm sorry. That's Thank you for liking my work, though. <laughs> I wish you could say the same. Ah, yes. <laughs> the infamous Paul Paul. Well, you stayed on the subject. I just thought it was that funny. I read it a couple of funny times, but I think you could have done better. Yes, ma'am. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Mike Snowburger. I, I want to follow him all night. I sound like a genius. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ron, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't here last week, but I saw you the first two weeks. I thought you were better the first two weeks. Um, I, I really think that this week should be like a, a softball toss. Everybody should knock this one out of the park. I'm a little surprised that you didn't, but um, the only advice I can give is next week, uh, you know, just work on it a little bit more. The whole reason we're doing the themes is because we want you guys to, to work on your craft, get better, put you in some uncomfortable situations so that you become a better comic. Because that's the whole reason I kind of started this whole thing. So anyway, uh, good job, but uh, I've seen you do better. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it a long time for Rum I don't even date no bitch named Shaniqua. That is bold. That is fucking bold, man. I, I, hey, man. I was believing it for a second, too. Man, I looked over there at his boyfriend like, did you know about this? We ain't gonna go there. We gonna keep this thing moving, man. This next guy coming to the stage, man. Very unique individual, man. Probably one of the most unique people you're ever gonna meet in this. Can I get some, can I get some reverb off of this? Mm -hmm. I sound like I'm out there and I'm losing bad draws in the video. Talk a little closer to it, Mike. Talk a little closer to it. I should say national anthem right now, shouldn't I? But I'll go home. We good now? My mic sounds nice, chick one. Okay, we good now. See, we work through technical difficulties the same way. That's my brother over there. Ebony and Ivory. Tim, let the mic get fucked up just for me. See what I'm saying? We, we do this, man. We're going to work through this thing, man. But this next brother coming to the stage, real unique guy. Not only, not only is this guy a military veteran, he is also a bodyguard. How about that? Ain't that something? A real live bodyguard, like some Kevin Costner type shit. Coming in all the way from Columbia, South Carolina. Y'all start clapping right now. Start clapping right now. Give a warm, that's my comment. Welcome to the Hulk, the comedian. Shit fucked up. I done fucked around and ran into Rum Dean ass in the mall over the weekend. The motherfucker, I was I went in that motherfucker to buy me some joints as I was coming out. He came up to me. He said, hey yo, hey Mark. You know where I can get some good fried chicken from? I said, Scrum Dean, what the fuck? I started to, I started to cuss that motherfucker. I said, what you trying to say? All black people like chicken? The shit was fucked up. I couldn't really cuss him out because I did know he could get some good fried chicken from him. <laughs> So after we ate a couple pieces of chicken together, you know, I realized we had more in common than the fuck I thought. You know, they say all black people good at sports. They say if they put us in any sport, we good at anything. Well, that shit must have skipped me. I tried out for every fucking sport in school. Basketball, football, tennis. I even fucking tried out for the cheerleading team. I ain't make that shit at all. But for some reason, my 11th grade year, I made the basketball team. Now, personally, I think somebody fucked their way to get me up on that team. But I ain't saying that. I said, whatever. To be honest with you, I was so fucking sorry at basketball. During the game, the coach blew the whistle. Ain't nobody make a basket, not a foul or nothing. He ran over to my coach. He said, Burr! 
He ran over to my coach. He said, God damn, that nigga sorry. I said, man, that's some fucked up shit. I had, I had to look all normal and shit, bouncing the ball like I ain't hear the shit. And then another room out there, they say all black men got big dicks. Y'all, do y'all find that very true? <laughs> well, that shit skipped me, goddammit. I ain't even heard none of that black, black thing at all. <laughs> Matter of fact, when I met my wife, we said that we was gonna wait till we got married to have sex. I'm pretty sure she regret that decision. <laughs> Cause on our honeymoon night, she was upset when I pulled out the three and a half inches of dick on my ass. She said, she said uh-uh, what the, fuck, what the fuck is that? I said, shit, bitch, your future, what the fuck you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so, we, so we started fucking. Well, I started fucking. She said, you got it in yet? I said, got it in. She said, shit, bitch, I'm through. What the fuck you talking about? You want some juice? Best seven and a half minutes of my goddamn life. <laughs> then they say Asians are some of the smartest people in the world. They say they have the highest IQ out of any race. Do y'all believe that? That's very fucking untrue. You mean to tell me that you can solve this long ass math problem, but you can't drive on the right side of the road? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> then they say black women don't like to swim. They say black women ain't getting no fucking water. Now that's fucking true. <laughs> that's the truth, goddamn. As much money as they pay for their fucking hair, black women ain't getting no fucking water. They put all that black gel and shit out in their fucking hair. I seen this one lady jump in the pool, she turned the pool into a Long Island iced tea. I said, <laughs> I said, let me get my ass out of this goddamn pool. <laughs> then another thing, they say white people don't beat their kids. Now, I was proven wrong the other day. Now, I went to CVS. I went to go get me some ointment, right? Don't worry about what I was going to get some fucking ointment. I was, I was just making sure y'all got all the details. So, I heard a little disturbance on the shampoo aisle. I heard a little Timmy getting fucked up on the shampoo aisle. All I heard was... Tim was getting fucked up. He started to cry. He said, ah. She said, shut up. So he seen me looking on the aisle at him. <laughs> you know how kids get mad. They start going and tell a little hiccup cry. He said, <sighs> He seen me looking at him. He said, leave me loud. <laughs> what the, why the fuck do kids do that shit? Leave me loud. <laughs> hey, I'm both the comedian, man. That's my time. Bro. Y'all give it up one more time for Horton Comedian. All right, we're going to start off with our judges. This time, Mike Snowberger, what do you think of Horton the Comedian? Well, by far, the best we've had so far tonight. <laughs> 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 oh. No, I, th I thought you did really good. I thought that you uh, brought up different racial stereotypes and weaved them into stories. I, I thought it was really good. I like it. Good job. Right. Paul, Paul. It's about time. <laughs> you did very well. I enjoyed it. Thanks. I have never heard you say that before. Y'all give it up. Give it up. Give it up. You about took me out with that Long Island night <laughs> Listen, you took me out. But listen, you, you did an awesome job. Thank you. Thanks. Y'all give it up for all the comedians. He's also available for bodyguard services too, y'all. Yeah, stand outside the house. He said he's down there with his shirt off too. So she said, oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'm talking about his race. <laughs> we gonna keep this thing going, man, because I gotta get back home to watch CSI. There you go. There you go. Oh, white people, let us see how about CSI. Y'all be watching that shit. I love the show too. Somebody always get raped, killed, beat up, uh, murdered right at the beginning of the show. First 35 seconds, I'll be trying to figure out who it is. Who's in that guy? Love that shit, man. All right, this time, man, y'all give it up. Warm, warm, warm. That's my comic. Welcome next time to coming to the stage. Please give it up for the one and only Willard.
try to reject a lot of stereo, uh, racial stereotypes I hear. Uh, one of my least favorite ones is you all know the typical scene of the you know the the black man walking down the street and the white lady walking down the other side. She clutches her purse. The purse is going to get robbed. I just don't really feel like that's that accurate. I think the white man has robbed far more many people than any black person ever has. We don't. We just don't use a gun or a knife. You know how a white person robs you. Uh, hi, sir. Would you like to apply for a loan? <laughs> I just picture certain people walking down the walking down the street and they clutch their purse when they see a smiling white man in a suit. <laughs> oh no! Not the hidden fees. <laughs> Not the interest rates. Oh God! It's terrifying. It really is. I do, I do want to say this. I'm very proud of the police force um, trying to. Uh, treat all races appropriately. They actually changed the uh, 911 protocol. Have y'all heard about that? Used to be, you call 911 and they would say, Hi, 911, what's your emergency? And now they say, Hi, 911, uh, please state your race so we can better assist you. <laughs> yeah, they had one incident where a black family had adopted a traditional white accent and the cop got there way too fast. <laughs> he didn't even have his weapon drawn. <laughs> Uh, 1019, 1019, uh, you realize these folks ain't white, right? <laughs> yeah. God damn it, Johnson, you should have known by the address. You're really making the station look bad. Oh. So there, I applaud the uh, law enforcement for really trying to bring all the races together there. Um, we're not all bad, though. All white people are not bad. I'm here to tell you that for sure. We're not all bad. If you think we're a bunch of hillbilly, overpaid, ungrateful, meth cooking, non-food seasoning, dancing like jackasses, I'm here to get, I got news for you, pal. You're mostly right. <laughs> mostly right. Uh, but I try to reject it. Uh, I've rebelled against that stereotype. Like, not the rebel flag rebelled. I think that's like a really silly mascot to choose. Like, I love the South, uh, American by birth, Southern by the grace of God, they say. And I just don't know why we picked the rebel flag as our our mascot for the South. Like, but that's the that's the flag my grandfather fought for to keep slavery going. Well, Jimbo, that's true, and uh, people died, but when you fly it on the back of your truck, it looks like you're looking for a rematch. <laughs> and I don't think that should happen, Jimbo. Uh, so I'll try, I think maybe we should like have like an eagle flying over a river with like some uh, Swisher Sweets in his paws or something like that. <laughs> maybe some moonshine on there. Much better flag. But... We, in, elect, in Georgia, we actually elected a real life racial stereotype as the governor of Georgia. Do y'all remember those uh, commercials when Brian Kemp was uh, running for governor? Uh, keep America moving in the right direction. Y'all remember those? Y'all know that it took so many takes to get him to say that, that they actually couldn't work on his fucked up smile at the end. He kept saying, Keep America moving in the white direction. <laughs> Keep America moving in the right direction. <laughs> but uh, that's all I got for you guys tonight. Just remember, we all bleed red, we all laugh, we all cry. We're all the same here on this earth, so let's get together. Thank you. Y'all give it up one more time for Willard. Let's take it to this guy. Oh, oh, hold on, Willard. Yeah, hold on. He can't pull the grab my waist, man. I feel like a debutante in this bitch. Hold on, move back up. I'm not gonna do. We're gonna take it to Paw Paw. What you think about Willard this week? Well, they're getting better. Well, they're getting better. Now, um, they're getting better. Now, he touched on a lot of the subjects. I don't know. I some of them was funny, some of them wasn't. You don't like that. You don't like that. Mike Snowbird. <laughs> I'm sorry.
Mary. You're the best judge ever. Uh, yeah, Willard, I mean, from week one to now, you're, you're definitely getting better. Um, you know, I, you, you're, I can tell that you uh, are working on it. Thank you. Um, you know, I feel like one thing about the, the themes is it, it kind of throws a curveball that y'all, every week you got to actually work on it. But if you're serious about this, that's what it's going to take. Um, I'm sure Kevin Hart didn't start off making everybody laugh their ass off. I'm sure he told a lot of damn jokes and people looked at him like he was crazy. So we just had to keep working it, working it, working it. And then eventually he found his thing. And uh, I think you're getting better. And I think by the time all this ends, I, I think you'll be putting a real good set together and, and, and really doing well. Thank you. Jules. You are getting better. Uh, I need you to flow more, lot less gaps, um, but you can keep your crowd engaged with you. Uh, but you did have some funny moments. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Give it up one more time for Willard, man. Oh, that was great, man. That was awesome, man. He had different jokes, punchlines. He went into some really unique stuff, man. Very good job, Willard. I was very impressed. Even if the judge is wedding, that pawpaw is rough. <laughs> pawpaw is a racial stereotype. <laughs> well, I'm flashing up now. <laughs> yeah, some part's good, some part's good. But get better, get better. You're not good, but you get better. You're not good, but you get better. I just want to know that. Uh, <laughs> you know? You're picking on me because I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love you, Papa. You all right with me, man. Uh, well, every week I'm gonna be right here saying the same thing I said week four. We're <laughs> <laughs> going to record and play it back. <laughs> Are y'all ready for your next comedian to say, oh yeah? Coming in at this time, man, y'all are in for a major, major treat. I'm very excited to see what this guy has to say about racial stereotypes. Please. Start clapping right now. Give a warm, that's my comic welcome to Mr. Skyler just an unfortunate stereotype. I don't believe it myself. Black women are not angry. Y'all are just suspicious. <laughs> that ain't resting bitch face that y'all got. That is the look of a cold and calculating detective incessantly investigating her surroundings at all times. Everybody's looking good. Everybody's feeling good. Let the congregation say amen. 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 Well, I don't believe women are angry. I think they're just suspicious. And because of that, I believe a more apt stereotype for them. Instead of snapping fingers and rolling necks, I think all black women should start talking like Basil Rathbone from the old Sherlock Holmes movies. <laughs> So, Mr. Daquan Hightower, I can tell from the wicked glint in your eye and the grotesque smirk across your face that you aim to get the draws. <laughs> but I'm afraid you shan't tell, boy. Damn, girl, how did you know that Tyrell was stepping out on you? <laughs> was elementary, my good man. <laughs> good day, old chap. That's, that's Victorian English for, hey, nigga, what's good? <laughs> now, I do want to address all the niggas in the audience. By nigger, 
I mean, those inclined towards militantly ignorant behavior. I mean, those inclined towards behavior profoundly lacking in any sense of self-awareness or common sense. So in this particular context, by niggas, I mean white people. <laughs> Y'all niggas are the most egregious perpetrators of the most unabashed niggerosity I have ever been in this place. <laughs> now white people, I've said on this stage before, I tease y'all because I love y'all and I want to help you. I'm going to give y'all some wisdom. All the white folks in the audience who got black friends, make some noise. Yes, most of y'all are living a niggerless existence. That's all right. I'm going to tell y'all, if you got a black friend that never ever talks shit about, black, about white folks around you, number one, that nigga ain't your friend. Because number two, he don't trust you. Because number three, he probably races as hell and don't know us. Listen, <laughs> white folks, if we are talking shit about you, well, about white folks, we're not talking about you. We are not talking about you in particular. Well, we are, but <laughs> we only doing that because we trust y'all. We trust y'all to listen and to take heed. And that's why I believe that everybody should get in contact with that inner nigga. In this context, by inner nigga, I mean those who have been downtrodden, those who have been oppressed, okay? If you're a working man, you probably got shit to talk about rich folks. If you're a woman, you probably got shit to talk about men. If you pawpaw, you probably got shit to talk about folks that still have all their teeth. Whatever it is, get in contact with your inner nigga to cultivate empathy and solidarity. So I want every white man and woman under the sound of my voice to make a pledge tonight that I am going to get in contact with my inner nigger. Say it with me. I am going to get in contact. <laughs> I'm going to get in contact. Y'all was really about to say that. <laughs> I was believing it. I really was. I've been Skylar Andrews and y'all have been wonderful. God bless you. Y'all give it up one more time for Skylar Andrews, man. Mike, what'd you think of, of uh, Skylar this week? Well, I'm going before Paul Paul, so I don't laugh too hard before I <laughs> uh, Skylar, I feel like I'm watching a uh, X-rated version of the I Have a Dream speech. Uh, you sound just like them. Uh, I, I knew that you would kill it this week, which you did. Great job. Uh, that's it. Hey, man. I'm going to leave it to Paul Paul now. And you made fun of him having no teeth, so good luck. <laughs> I do have all my real top teeth. <laughs> now you done very well. It, it, it was good. It was funny. And I do, I, I agree with Mike. I like the way you make me feel like I'm in church. <laughs> you done a good job. Keep it up. It's all about love. It's all about love. So I do. I was wondering how you were going to top last week from Walmart. After your bid from Walmart, last week could fit into today because you touched all races last week too. <laughs> but um, like I said last week, you took us back to the civil rights movement to today. Like I feel like we were in that era, what you're talking about today. So keep up the great work. I love seeing you every week. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Skylar Andrews. <laughs> I would just like to point out that Paul Paul must go to a fucked up church if that reminds me of it. <laughs> I love Paul Paul. Give me a Paul Paul t-shirt. I ain't, ain't mad at Paul Paul at all. Now, I do have one question, Skylar. Did you uh, bring this bench from home or, did, or was this, is this the original Chevy's bench? That's another stereotype. They said niggas be stealing shit. But they're, they're back. 
<laughs> you see it on camera, they put it back, okay? I just want to test that out. I know what you did with it or not. You just came up here with a whole bench, see? You don't know what's going to happen if that's my comic. That's why you got to be here every week. If I'd have told you, hey, man, that's a dude that shed, he talked like Martin Luther King, stole a bench and then brought it back, you would have never been here to You got to be here to see this kind of stuff, man, all right? So, I forgot who the next damn comic is. I left my face over there. Huh? Okay, oh, hey, thank y'all. Well, y'all, see, y'all was judges. Y'all were on it, man. Papa ain't say shit. I ain't gonna let that do this. And I reckon he's gonna be just like he was the week before. We just wanna make sure we can get him on in there. Now, coming to the stage at this time, man, this dude is a mainstay downtown at Joe's Underground. He's actually hosted open mic down there over a year. And they recently got the steps fixed, so he don't bust his ass when he go downstairs no more. <laughs> Y'all give it up for the one and only Mr. Marcus Ken. He got up. He was like, 
go outside, nigga. Right? And I was hard at first until I turned around to walk outside. And the tears started coming, right? It's like, damn, I'm about to fight my daddy. But I'm like five inches taller than my pops. He's a little guy. He's like five, six. So he's a little dude. He's stocky, but he's he, he little. So we go outside. Oh, shit, I'll never forget this shit. We go outside, and my uncle was there. And he was drunk, and it was 4 o'clock. It was 6 or something, and that's just what uncles do, I think. Uncles just get drunk in the middle of the day. He was drunk as fuck, and he was sitting on the porch, and he was watching. And we went outside, and I was being hard as fuck. My dad was calm. He was very calm. He said, all right, square up, man. <laughs> Just like this right here. I was like, all right, I got six inches on this motherfucker. I'm about to fuck him up, right? I got confidence. I knew I could fuck him up. I could fuck him up. When I tell y'all I swung one time and missed and got hit with the fucking hardest two-piece of my...
to get as many laughs as y'all can. If you tell a long story, damn it, it better be good. <laughs> Either that or you need to fill your five minutes up with different things to make people laugh consistently throughout your set. I'm gonna emphasize that again, okay? It's just like if you go to a gunfight, you know you're going to a gunfight, they got semi-automatic weapons. You want to have that Uzi shooting out guns, bullets, and like joke. If you come in there with two goddamn bullets, and you going to get a bunch of Uzis, you're going to get your ass shot the fuck up. Congratulations, Marcus. You got your ass shot. <laughs> but if you do tell a long story, make sure you end it with a tremendous bang. You take more of a, you take more of a chance spending all that all your time on one story, man. But hey, it's about living and learning. It's about moving on and doing better, man. I definitely know you're a funny brother and you'll be back. Y'all give it up for Marcus. He'll be back next week. <laughs> next week, don't tell that long fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> this kind of stuff I think to myself in the car when I be riding home that I don't get to say to people. But he said it like in the middle. And we had time tonight. I'm still gonna be able to make CSI, so I figured I'd tell him about itself, man. But everybody remember that, man. This is a competition, man. Fill your five minutes up with as many funny moments as you can. You wanna get all these people on your side. They ready to laugh too. Even the loud ass people at the bar are still talking. They ready to laugh too. We just gotta make them laugh, all right? Are y'all ready for y'all next comedian? Somebody say, yeah! yeah. Oh, that was hood. Now, y'all sounded hood as fuck, but I see. <laughs> Y'all watch the BET Awards then. I can tell you, I watched that BET Award, that little Nas X guy going down that country road in time. There we go. <laughs> Coming to the stage right now, man, this guy here is a living resurrection story. He came out the first week. I didn't even think he was going to come back. He took off walking on foot. True story. He left. I said, where you at? He said, man, I'm walking in the middle of Washington Road. I said, yeah, I would have gave you a ride, bro. But, uh, you know, he said he was going to be back. And every week he has gotten tremendously better. He's even become a fan favorite. I want y'all to give a warm. That's my comment. Welcome to my man, the one and only Foolish. You know, white people not liking me. <laughs> and uh, shit. So, you know, racist stereotype. Well, it happened to my wife. Now, my wife, she a plus size woman, and she dark skin. I mean, you know, she dark. You turn off the lights, she smiled. That's the only way you're gonna see it. <laughs> and um, she said she was cleaning the lady's room, and her, and her husband was arguing. And she threw the ice at the lady. Well, the lady threw the ice at the husband. And he said, why you do that? She said, let the monkeys clean it. I said, why she was in the hospital? She said, the left, she said the left side of her body was numb. I said, I would have told that half dead body, bitch, I'll punch in your face. You feel what I'm saying? That wasn't really funny. It was some real racist <laughs> shit. Whatever. Y'all ain't got that. That's a true story. Um, I'm going to fuck up this week. I ain't doing too good because I really didn't know what racist stereotypes. But, um, white people, they're real nice. The second day I was working with them, you know, he was like, hey man, you know what I'm saying? How old are you? He asking all my information, like we're on a fucking date. And then, as we at the restaurant, I had $120 on me. This motherfucker still paid for my food. He was like, hey man, what you want? I was like, oh shit, give me the chili cheese dog with the chili cheese tots. And he said, I started pulling out my wallet. He was like, Hey man, he said, no man, I got you, I got this. I said, no man, I got money. No, I got you. I guess he was trying to pay me back for slavery. I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know, but shit. 
I just added me some Skittles on there, uh, an extra drink, some nine liters for later, you know, shit like that. Uh, shit, this ain't going too good for me. <laughs> Pretty fucked up. Oh, shit. What you talking about to the straight? My boy got my doctors with the penny loafers on this motherfucker. I'm right there, I'm with the watch on. You got my doctors? Can't be mad about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look. Give me next week's surgery, I'll be back. <laughs> Woo! I'm out. Excuses as good as peanut butter. 
So you can sit there and tell me right now the reason I did bad is because of peanut butter, yeah. and I'm going to give it as much about credit as you just gave me right there. If you want this, you got to get this. Okay? You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've seen the last two weeks what you can do when you put time into it. And I know you got to work, you got to do all this shit. I know that. But you you are good enough and you can win this thing that you got to, you know, shit, if it means four hours of sleep instead of for five, then that's what you got to do. I didn't build this bar by just sitting my ass at the house complaining about how busy I was doing other shit. You know what I'm saying? You got to put it in, dog. You can do it. You literally can do it, but you you got to do it. I don't think you built this bar anyway. It was some more shit before you got it. I would have just went one shit falling apart. <laughs> so I do what you think, what you think about foolish. Oh man, I'm so sorry that you bombed. But uh, take this as your, compare this to, the, to Michael Jordan's rookie year. He went out there on that court, he got his ass kicked every night by the bad boys of the NBA. And he said they were the reasons why he became the greatest player to ever play the game. So take everything that everybody's saying here and not saying. If you're not getting laughs, then that means you need to get back in the lab and do some work. Um, I'm an artist too, and I spend countless hours on my craft. I never, I'm never where I want to be. Regardless of who tells me they admire me, I got a bunch of people saying, sorry, you suck. So, say it, don't shake your head, yes. I saw that, I saw that. I'm agreeing with you, I'm agreeing with you. Yes, sorry, you suck, I saw that. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) Um, but I take that, and instead of counting it as negativity, it's my challenge. So, every week, I want you to, Pick something that we're talking about, that we tell you you need to work on, and go work on that and perfect that on the stage the following week. And make sure you're hitting up open mics in between time. And y'all give it up one more time for Foolish. I felt like I sat through a whole goddamn counseling session, man. Dang, boy, that was wild, that was they really like you though, man. They gave you a lot of good constructive criticism because they really didn't have to. That was nice, man. But that's what it is, man. Every competitor, fill your whole set with jokes, back to back. Jokes, back to back. Fill it, with, fill it with material. Don't come up here and wing it. Know what you're talking about. Know what the subject is. You know what I'm saying? Do it, do, do the best you can for you. We got to turn the people on your side. Because shit, if people coming for the first time, if it's their first time coming tonight, you think they're coming back? I think we lost a couple people here. <laughs> just because they fucking up. That ain't got nothing to do with my credibility. You know? I still come holler at your boy. No, I'm just playing, man. But that's what this is about. It's about building and everybody getting better, doing better. I was at the bar. I couldn't even get my, my, my drink together. Oh, shit. I fucked up so bad. And that's a bad feeling when you're up here, too. And ain't nobody laughing. You start hearing them goddamn crickets. Not <laughs> the sound you want to hear. I don't think you can hear. I don't think you see people talking, you looking around, nobody. All you can hear is boys and me, end of the road. Doom, boom, doom, boom. We belong together. You be playing boys and me, nobody? Over, nigga. You be like that dude at the base dude that did. I knew you were out with that other fellow. I just didn't care. <laughs> That's some soft ass shit for a man to say. I knew you were with him, baby. Come back, please. <laughs> Get your ass on stage. Y'all make sure y'all prepare, man, because we done had. And we have an occasion two bombs tonight, two, three bombs tonight. Tonight we got them Hiroshima. <laughs> the fuck is this? Please take this shit seriously, y'all. Take this shit seriously. We got major opportunities coming around. And not only do I have shows coming up, Saju's got shows coming up. We even uh, host a internet talk radio show on Wednesday. We might want to have y'all come be a guest or something. Now, you never know what opportunities in here. It's entertainers and actors all through this whole thing, man. You never know what opportunities out there for y'all. Please just take it seriously. And it's white people here with good credit. <laughs> Some of y'all make good fucking dependents, you know what I'm saying? 
I would love to have a goddamn a black dude look like Martin Luther King and wear paisley shirts to work for me or some shit like that. Y'all imagine that? Scott Andrews, he your goddamn concierge, he open the door for you. Do you need me to get you anything else, sir? No, you never give me a polar pop cup. Big man. Look, that nigga work for me. We gonna keep this thing going, man. We got two more comedians, man. I'm gonna make sure everybody see me. You all right? IT guy, you okay? Great. We got three more? It's three? Yeah. I ain't fucking up tonight. <laughs> Keep the drinks coming. I'm under stress. <laughs> now, next comedian coming to the stage. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure. I, I have the right name. I don't want to mess it up. Y'all say it's three. Okay. Somebody just came in late? I'm just tripping. Man. I'm bombing the night. I'm fucking up. I'm bad, y'all. Next brother coming to the stage, man. He's been at it for a minute. Dynamic. Chris, Christian comedian, man, real good guy, man, good hearted brother. This brother shares my posts, he likes my stuff. I mean, I'm talking about he shared my stuff so fast, I be wondering if it's really him. Like, damn it, I just posted this shit, nine seconds later, he just shared it. This is a good hearted individual, man. Y'all give it up for the one and only Mr. J. Cole. What's going on, Seven? Go ahead and tell all these days. I'm gonna be straight up with y'all. I started going to an all-white church. I can't do black churches no more. White churches, y'all get in and y'all get out. Service started at 9 o'clock. By 9.05, y'all had to go to prayer. Sit down ready. Right <laughs> black churches, we started at Nine o'clock, nine o'clock p.m. Monday evening, we get out of church. <laughs> we didn't have to call our job and told them, "Look, we ain't gonna be able to make it to, make it to uh, work on Monday because we still in church." Look, white people, when y'all sing, y'all singing, you know, get straight to the point. No, no problem with it. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number. Oh, when the saints go marching in, hallelujah! <laughs> Black churches? Oh, no. Man, you gonna get out here and finish the rest of this song? <laughs> well, the rest of us, she didn't even let the saints go marching in. They start acting a fool. <laughs> White people, y'all got good, good insurance. I know y'all got real good insurance. How I know? Because when y'all loved ones die, if, if, if Jim died tonight, Jim going in the ground tomorrow. <laughs> Black people, we don't believe in. We don't believe we gonna die. No time. To. <laughs> we don't go get no kind of insurance. Look, if my boy Black died tonight, it'll probably be three, four months <laughs> before he get buried. See. Black people, they use that lie all the time, talking about we waiting on people from out of town to come in. No, you ain't got the money. Stop lying, y'all ain't got the money. How we know they ain't got the money? Because look, black people, we, we you know, the white people, y'all put y'all people on in, in, in the ground. Black people, we got, make, we make plates, food, that we sell, we get enough money for the film. <laughs> T-shirt. With the person who ever died, face on the front, we selling them. We still, we still enough money trying to put them in the ground. I'm telling you, man, if we hey, we black people, we need to get insurance for real. We have to get insurance. My insurance ain't nothing but a dollar and forty-two cents a month because I'm young. 
<laughs> I'm telling you now, these funeral homes ain't playing no more about this, this whole thing in insurance. White people, y'all good. Black people, let me tell you. They're not playing. They are not playing. My cousin died a month, last month. Okay? They didn't call the whole family, and I already know what they call Jose and Because they need money. They're trying to get money to put put my boy Red in the ground. Put him in the ground. My cousin Red in the ground. Now, he just sold all this dope. <laughs> all this dope in the neighborhood. Where, where's all the money at? The bear. Right. Ain't got no money. Okay? So let me tell you, like I say, the funeral home ain't playing no more, y'all. They're not playing no more. So they told them they had half of the money, right? And they said they're going to give them the other half of the night of the wait. Okay, y'all, we goes in to the wait. Now, cash can usually be sitting right there. You know, when you go in, in the room where the dead body at, the cash be right there in the chapel. Supposed to be right here. Y'all, because they ain't have all the money, they didn't leave my cousin up against the wall right here. <laughs> It's not hard to tell which car is mine. 
It's the only car in the parking lot that's got a Nickelback CD sitting in the passenger seat. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm gonna make a deal with you tonight, y'all. Uh, all, my, all my fellow black dudes out there. Uh, if you promise not to beat the shit out of me tonight, I promise I will buy all of your mixtapes. <laughs> I will follow you on uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, whatever you need, man. I got you. I'm not just going to be talking about black folks or white folks, so you know what? I'm going to make a deal with everybody. If you're here tonight and you're Hispanic and I say something that uh, offends you, hit me up tomorrow. I promise you I will uh, help you push your car to work tomorrow. I got your back, dog. What do you need? If you're Asian and I say something that offends you tonight, I will pretend to be okay with your weird tentacle porn. <laughs> I know Marcus Gann is over there laughing like tentacle porn is my shit, dude. If you ever hear a news story about a man who tried to fuck an octopus, it's Marcus Gann over there. <laughs> he knows, he knows. Oh man. White folks, I'm not gonna leave you out. Uh, most of my shit is probably gonna offend more white people than anybody else. If I say anything that offends some white folks, well, you know what? Congratulations, y'all are learning. If you don't, you can probably not beat the shit out of me. No, I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll make a deal with y'all too. Uh, if well, the white people here promise not to beat the shit out of me afterwards, I will buy y'all a Coldplay album and some Stoker's macaroni and cheese. <laughs> We love that Stouffer's macaroni and cheese. I don't know why. It's like if you just like put some racism and put some cheese on it, you eat that shit up. Like, oh, it's so good. I don't know why. Oh my god. So like speaking of like Hispanics, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I really wish we. I really wish we would leave these immigrants alone, man. Like, come on, they're all like. Leave them alone, like, they just, they're just coming over here because they're like, oh man, like, they, they think that they, they're just trying to come over here, they're trying to leave a life of hardship and poverty and just, like, persecution because they think the grass is greener on the, on the, on the, on the other side. Who can blame them? Most of their cousins are over here in the landscaping business. <laughs> I feel like they should know what they're talking about. When I was younger... When I was younger and I was still living with my parents, we had to have uh, the roof replaced on our house twice, okay? First time, crew of nothing but white folks. Took two weeks to replace that roof. The second time, we hired a group of Mexicans. Two days! Two days! They did it in half the cost, and all they wanted was some churros, some Coronas, and to watch the Oakland Raiders game with us. <laughs> That's all I wanted, man. It was shit. It was a deal. Oh my god. But uh, I want to talk about. Have y'all ever heard the debate between like who who does it better, like white drug dealers or black drug dealers? Y'all ever heard that debate? No. No. Oh my god. All right. Well, I'm about to enlighten y'all. So. Uh, I've heard this debate once, it was uh, posted online, and it was like, who does it better, white drug dealers or black drug, drug dealers? I don't really think that anyone does it better than the other, uh, but I do think there are some pros and cons of both. Uh, I've experienced both. So, <laughs> all right, I'm glad y'all find that funny. <laughs> awesome. But, uh, so I've had some, uh, I just smoke weed, y'all. All right, so it's not that it's not that hard. It's not that crazy. So I found like, you know, and by the way, uh, I found out that uh, like if you smoke weed, you buy weed. Uh, weed man is in fact a gender neutral term. I've had some females sell me some weed. It is a gender neutral term. It's safe. Um, but black drug dealers. All right, con. Uh, white white drug dealers are more punctual. <laughs> Not gonna lie. White drug dealers will be like, "Hey, what you need, man? Oh, all right, all right, cool. I'll be there in um, 
17 minutes exactly. Synchronize watches go. <laughs> Black Joe Dudes are like, hey man, I'll be there in a ha uh, half an hour. Three hours later. <laughs> hey man, I'm pulling up right now. <laughs> it still takes them 15 minutes to pull up. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Three hours. Jesus Christ, I've already got other weed. <laughs> I've taken a nap and I've beaten GTA 5. I don't need you anymore. <laughs> like, the thing I love most, though, why I would always prefer black Joe dealers over white Joe dealers. Once a transaction is over, black Joe dealers will leave you the fuck alone. <laughs> white Joe dealers want to be your best fucking friend. They're like, hey man, so uh, you trying to smoke a bowl? <laughs> By myself, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh man, you got Call of Duty? Do you want to play a couple matches? By myself, yeah. <laughs> But they served me up real nice, they were polite. It goes too far, next thing you know, you and Mark have a fucking fishing trip planned for Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> you know how I got that far. <laughs> True story, one time, I had a white drug dealer, he just told me some weed. After the shit was over, he was like, he got a phone call, and he was like, yeah, yeah, no, oh, that's awesome, cool, yeah, no, yeah, I'll be right there. Hey, bro. My mom is making macaroni and cheese for dinner. You want to come over? And I was like, no, Mark, I don't. I don't. He's like, are you sure? It's Stouffer's. And I was like, well, shit, I'm getting my shoes on right now, man. <laughs> Yo, my name is Kevin Franklin. I appreciate y'all know where I'm from. Peace out. You gotta give it up one more time for Kevin Franklin, man. Let us take it to the judges and see what we got this one. Who's going first? It looks like, uh-oh, Paw Paw's grabbed the microphone. Yes, speak on it, Paw Paw. That was great. Thank you. That's all I'm gonna say about it. All right. All right. Mike Snowberg, what you think about Paw Paw's now? Oh, damn. Think about Kevin. <laughs> what do I mean, Paul? Shit, we've been here for an hour. We all know what we're thinking about Paul. <laughs> uh, so this is the first time. First time I've seen you last week. Obviously, I wasn't here. I was in Louisiana. But um, I think that uh, the, the beginning of the set was fucking Comedy Central worthy. I feel like at the end of the set, because you did so good at the first of the set, people were laughing harder for not as good material. But, I mean, it was good, by far, in my opinion, the best of the night, but I just think that, you know, if you, if you would have, if you would have finished the way you started, dude, you would have, you, I mean, stop it. Shut the fuck up. Oh. <laughs> Alright, passing the mic. Sanju, what do you think about Kevin Franklin's performance? In the words of Papa, he started off strong. <laughs> We've been there before. <laughs> no, but you you really did just come out the gate like on point. And I think you kinda got lost. That's where you, you fell off a little bit. But listen. You were still funny overall, so thank you. All right, thank you. Y'all give it up to Kevin Franklin, man. Awesome, man. I don't know who the fuck stuck the mic stand over in the back corner of the stage. That is some unorthodox shit. I've always wanted to be a rock star. And why the rock star, this is a white stereotype, why the rock star pick up the whole damn mic stand when they sing it and they walk around with it? Y'all know that? You ain't never seen Luther Vandross walk around with a whole damn mic stand. You ain't never seen Jeffrey Osborne walk around with a whole mic stand. You ain't never seen Michael Jackson pick up a whole mic stand. But you seen Bon Jovi do it, Aerosmith, all of them do it, man. I love that shit, man. I'm gonna get me a whole mic stand for my house and just walk around with that bitch. <laughs> love it, man. We are down to our last comic. Yeah. <sighs> Make sure I was right there. I'm about to, that much closer to CSI. 
Please stay with us, folks. Please stay with us. I know there's a lot of chatter in the background. That's rude as fuck. I want y'all to know that. People want y'all to listen to them. Yes, I said it. I don't care. And I ain't going to wreck my career or nothing because I said that. It's the Southern hospitality. You bastards are talking during these people's set. It's rude. On the flip side, comedians, you got to make these people laugh, but they going to start goddamn talking. <laughs> if you don't make them laugh, they're going to start talking to your ass. And that's not a good feeling. You're trying to tell jokes and people hollering right back at you. I got a microphone, motherfucker. You going to holler at me? Don't do that, man. Y'all make them, make them laugh. Keep the material going, man. Last gentleman tonight, he is extremely talented. I hope he shows y'all that tonight. <laughs> Dynamic singer, songwriter, he does a lot of other things, man. Very, very talented guy. He entered the competition a couple weeks ago. Didn't go that well the first week. He rebounded last week. And he came back again. Anybody ever had a kid play sports? Yeah, kid play sports. And you always knew when you saw like the sorry kid's parents that the sorry kid was playing that night. <laughs> Same way I feel when I see this guy come up to the microphone. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. This guy is funny, man. This is my man, man. Super talented. I did some stage plays, some other stuff with him. Please, DJ, play this music and please give a warm That's my comic welcome to the one and only Mr. Tim Gilmore Jr. I kid you not. I think we should just do away with racism. I kid you not, because without different races, I wouldn't even be here. Think about my name. They said introducing Till Gilmore Jr. Do you know how many times that has got me a job? <laughs> I mean, it's just great. And because my great grandfather is white, his name was Hamilton. That spiced it up even more. My middle name is Hamilton. So imagine putting that on your resume. It don't matter what you have underneath it. Just the first part, Timothy Hamilton Gilmore Jr. He got the job. <laughs> Now, it's great, you know, it's, it gives me like, what, 15% white? That's great, I love it. But it didn't really show up to a parent. I can't really tell when you look at me. <laughs> but it's in there. It comes out like secretly like, it comes out when I talk. And I figured this out. Because when I was young, I tried to get a job, got one at Bilo. Everything was over the phone, did it over the internet, had a job. When I called the phone, I was like, hi, my name is Timothy Gilmore. I'm calling for the job. I'm trying to get the cashier position. I have experience. I've worked at uh, Walmart for at McDonald's for about three years now with the manager in training. The guy in another day said, all right, Tim, uh, you got the job. I see here, fill out some paperwork. I was like, cool, I'll be there in a few moments. Pulled up. Great, got there. Got in the door. He had a gate of who I was. I'm Timothy Gilmore, here for the job. He's like, oh. Oh, okay, let's see, ID. Get my ID. He, um, for some reason, when I talked to him on the phone, I had a job as a cashier making about $11 an hour. When I got there, um, the only thing he had left was the bad boy position, making minimum wage. And then he took me to the DMV to get my ID check because he thought it was fake, so I didn't do that. But Tom got that. I had a job as a bad boy. I ain't gonna lie, I took the job because he's a job. But over the phone, I realized I had to switch my position, my profession. I had the perfect idea. I'm going to work at a call center. This is the only place I can go there. And it's crazy how I got the job, because I worked from home. They did the interview, and I was going over the things because I'm part, you know, Spanish. I was like, okay, what's going to be the best voice to give me this job? I was like, okay, I should bring out my Spanish. Hi, my name is Timothy Gilmore Jr. I'm calling for the job. I just want to know if I got it. It wasn't for construction, though. It was just like for selling the crack. 
See, this what I did. I changed it up. I was like, hey, yo, 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 my name is Jeff. Yo, my June, you know what I'm saying? Got an accent to June. I need a job right now. That didn't give me the job either. But when I answered the phone like this, my name is Timothy Hamilton Gilmore Jr. I'm just calling to check on my application. I had a job the next day, guys. I never let them see me. To this day, I'm now making twenty-five dollars an hour <laughs> selling crack. <laughs> Why y'all laughing? That, not crack cocaine. It's a new product that actually gets in the cracks and crevices in the bathroom. It's a cleaning agent. <laughs> but I ain't gonna lie. I heard some the craziest thing. Somebody said they wouldn't sleep with a black man. I beg to differ because if my great grandfather, who was white, wouldn't have slept with my great grandmother, which was black, then I wouldn't be here. So I made a conscientious decision to end all racism, and this is my proposition. It should be illegal for any race to have less than one child by another race. <laughs> Think about it. If everybody mixes with different races, eventually there will only be one race, a mixture. And this benefits everywhere, Chinese, they can move energy with their thoughts. You're gonna need that. Black people, they can create anything with their hair. <laughs> White people, they can wake up in the morning and do nothing to their hair, and it'll still look great. But the Chinese are a little bit better than that. Don't know why Pakistani has been raised well. All I know is, I want to have a baby with every single one of them just so I can talk to my little Spanish baby and be like, Chico, come here, I love you. <laughs> talk to my African baby, I know I told you to go in the kitchen and get what you need. You need to come back right now. And then my white baby, Timothy, I'm going to give him the third. Great report card. That's my time, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Y'all give it up for Tim Gilmore Jr. one time. Let's take it to the judges. Sadhu. Um, I don't have too much to say, but uh, at least you were comfortable on stage this week. <laughs> thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. Paw Paw. Well, I didn't think we really that good, but uh, Go ahead, Papa. Say something different. <laughs> I really didn't play you that good. <laughs> oh, no, man. I know you're funny. Where's it at? I'm still trying to figure that out, Papa. I was a child and everything. Yeah, you have to talk. Hey, you don't do that. Yeah, you love to talk. Nah, I, 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 I figure everybody's doing a lot better this week, but kind of overall, not really. But. <laughs> yeah, we're doing sometimes. Mine's not worthy. Finish the blood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go as far as Jamar did we the first time you were here. But dude, that that, that was good. Um, I, I this this me and you talking, okay? Forget all these other people that are in here. We are not here. <laughs> you know, the, the thing that the, when me